Scotland might not be the first place that comes to mind when you think about gold exploration. But actually, there's quite a lot of gold in Scotland and it's been mined here for centuries. There are many localities in Scotland that are mentioned in historic references, ranging from areas in the southern uplands to central Scotland and Aberdeenshire, and all the way to Sutherland in the northwest of Scotland. But let's first go to the beginning. Well, this is Crawford Muir in southern uplands modern-day Leggills area, and this is where it all started. Recorded history of gold mining in Scotland dating all the way back to the medieval times. Lead, and not gold, was what initially brought people to mine in this area, but they soon found out that plenty of gold could be extracted from the alluvial sediments. In 1502, a nugget of about 840 grams was reputedly recovered here, and during the reign of James IV, there may have been over 300 miners washing for gold. Gold was mined here to make the Scottish regalia between 1538 and 1542, and gold worth £100,000 was apparently obtained in three years during the reign of James V. The value today would be nearly £40 million. Gold mining in this area continued well into the 17th century, but it became an increasingly difficult task. Panning for Gold Hill has never really stopped and you can still obtain a license to pan for gold in Ledials, but profitable mining activity ceased by the end of the 17th century. Alluvial gold was well known elsewhere, and some copper and lead hard rock mines also yielded gold as a by-product, John Calvert in 1853 lists not only the southern uplands gold localities, but also mentions several others, particularly in central Scotland, places like the Loch Tay area, the Angus Glens and Aberdeenshire. But although gold was reported from quite a few localities across Scotland, until the second half of the 19th century, this area was the famous one. Southern uplands, especially the southwestern parts, that's where the gold was coming from. Until about 1869, when something really shook things up. Calvert had already in 1853 mentioned a one and a half ounce nugget found in Sutherland, but it took another find in 1868 when a local man returning from Australian gold fields recovered a large nugget at Kildonan near Holmesdale and triggered the Sutherland Gold Rush in 1869. I went to have a look at the location where the gold rush played out myself. Actually, you can still pan at Kildonan, but you need a license, so I'm going to go and get one. Good. I'm all good to go. Kildonan lies a short drive up the valley from Helmsdale, the location of the old mining camp, Isle and Ore, meaning Town of Gold, is at the Kildonan Burn Bridge. More than 150 years of gold extraction in the burn here probably means it is difficult to find anything these days, but I will give it a go. Today, Panners are not allowed to prise open rock fractures or dig into the banks, so gold panning here is purely recreational. But I did manage to find a promising spot near some bedrock exposure. Well, it seems I got lucky, but it's very small and there's only one of them, so I think I'll just release it back into the wild. Much more gold was to be found here during the gold rush. It is estimated that in early 1869, around 600 men came here to Kildonan Burn 
and the next bone north of Seaskill bone to dig for gold. We don't know how much they extracted, but some estimates put the figure at more than 400 kilograms, which would equal over 20 million pounds with today's gold prices. But the gold rush only lasted for about a year, but it wasn't because they ran out of gold. The Duke of Sutherland was initially amenable for gold mining, although many miners were deterred by the introduction of a mining license fee of one pound per miner per month, that is about 85 pounds in today's money. The miners also had to pay a 10% crown royalty on any gold found. But unlike today, there were no environmental and societal regulations in the 19th century. Like Cameron mentions in his 1870 paper, real issues began when the Duke realised that many of his tenant farmers started to claim significant compensation for the damages caused, particularly to sheep farming. The Duke concluded that the amount of licence fees did not compensate the Duke for the sums he had to pay to his tenants. So it was ultimately the conflicting interest between the gold miners the landowner and the farmer tenants that put the stop to it. The bedrock source for the gold was never found, despite several attempts. Most geologists who published their findings suggested that the gold is locally derived, although the importance of glacial processes was well recognised even in the 19th century. So, apart from the little gold that was derived as a by-product from other hard rock mines, the Scottish gold has always been found in alluvial sediments. The last 19th century scientific publication on Scottish gold in 1895 by Edward Greenley does identify quartz vein samples taken from Kildonan that yielded some gold up to 2.5 ppm, but their findings do not explain the significant amount of gold in the sediments. Even in southern uplands, there were no reliable records of a hard rock source for gold. By the end of the 19th century, the interest in gold exploration had waned and all the gold mining activities in Scotland had stopped. It took almost 100 years for the activity and the exploration interest to renew. But that is a topic for another video.